last. I got everything you asked for, but the grocery store was unbelievably crowded. It looked like every single line was the longest one. Hey, it took you a while to get to the door, Daddy. Are you feeling okay today? Oh, a little under the weather. My, my left eye is a little blurry. Yeah? How long has that been going on? When was the last time you got your glasses looked at? Well, you know, it happened again yesterday, too. But then it got better again. Then it started again about an hour ago. Most people don't know what their future is going to be. Judy Pastor did. Dr. Hopkins said I would have a stroke. With stroke, timing is everything. The reason I'm doing as well as I am is because the doctors reacted very quickly. Until recently, there was no effective prevention or treatment of stroke without major surgery. My neurosurgeon was very uncomfortable with going through the skull. A revolutionary new procedure for treating or preventing stroke. I'll finish straightening up out here, Daddy, and then I'll make us some lunch. You know, I think maybe your eye doctor should get a look at you. Did you hear me? My hand is my hand is numb. I'm sorry, Daddy. Did you say something? My, my hand is, Daddy. is numb. It's tang tingly. My hand is, what is it? it tingles. It's, it's numb. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I, I, I can see fine again. Oh, Dan, I spilled the coffee. Never mind that. Now, wait, you said this happened to you before. Your eye and your arm? Yeah, but don't worry. Look, it's all better again, see? Recent surveys show that Americans fear stroke more than heart disease. Yet the public remains dangerously unaware of how stroke is caused, treated, and prevented. Stroke is a form of cardiovascular and neurological disease. Most people already know the signs of a heart attack. Few people, however, know the signs of a stroke. Those signs include difficulty speaking or understanding, weakness or numbness in the arm, leg, or face on one side of the body, sudden blurred or decreased vision, unusual dizziness or loss of balance. Well, call me crazy, but I think you should see a doctor just the same. You know, just to be on the safe side. Did you want more milk too, Daddy? Daddy? Daddy, what is it? Strokes rob thousands of Americans of the retirement they've dreamed of. Four million Americans are living with the effects of stroke. But strokes can occur at any age. Even a baby can suffer a stroke. In fact, a third of stroke victims are under 65. Stroke is a condition where a part of your brain dies. And it can be because an artery is blocked or because an artery ruptures. But the net result is that a part of your brain is destroyed and it dies. Stroke is, because of that, the number one cause of disability in, the, in this country today. Dr. L. Nelson Hopkins, or Nick as he is known to his colleagues, is a world-renowned neurosurgeon who's on the cutting edge of technology for stroke prevention and treatment. He is also the director of the Stroke Prevention and Research Foundation and chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery for the State University of New York at Buffalo. If somebody develops a sudden stroke, then the brain is very, very, very sensitive to loss of oxygen and loss of, of nutrients that keep it going. And we only have a period of a few hours. Our window of opportunity to reopen a plugged blood vessel is somewhere in the neighborhood of six hours. There are two types of stroke, ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke. Ischemic stroke is more common and occurs when blood flow to the brain is blocked. Hemorrhagic stroke is less common but more deadly and occurs when there is bleeding into or around the brain itself. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Father Eugene Zimfer is one of Dr. Hopkins' patients who had an ischemic stroke. Father Zimfer is currently an administrator at Canisius High School in Buffalo, New York, the same high school from which he graduated 50 years ago. In 1982 and 1992, Father Zimfer had suffered a heart attack and underwent two different bypass surgeries. Everything was fine until 1998 and uh, in March, and I was going to see the librarian when suddenly I developed a paralysis in one side, and then I uh, sat down and eventually lost consciousness. I was in my office, and one of the students came down from the library and said, you have to come up to the library, Father Zimfer is having a fit or something. And Gene's a very energetic, hard-working guy, and he has a bit of a temper. So I thought he was yelling at someone, so I didn't 
rush up there. But when I got up there, I could tell he was having a stroke. With prompt reaction from a co-worker's call to 911, Father Zimfer was able to be rushed to a hospital in a timely manner. I rode over in the ambulance with him, and we spoke to several doctors, but within an hour a doctor approached us and said that uh, he had a procedure he could do, and uh, to be honest, it could kill him, but if he didn't do it, he would probably spend the rest of his life in a nursing home. So the superior and I looked at each other, we knew that Gene wouldn't want that, so we told him we thought Gene would want him to do the procedure, and so they did. Father Zimfer was paralyzed and unable to talk, and we took him to the angio suite and put a, a little microcatheter up into the artery in his brain, and we could see that there was a major blockage in the, um, one of the major arteries inside his head. And we used a, a clot-busting drug to break apart that clot. We saw the blood vessel open up, and within a, a matter of minutes, he started moving his right side. And then within 10 or 15 minutes, he was starting to talk to us a little bit. And then within three or four days of the getting that artery open, he was back to virtually normal. The reason I'm doing as well as I am is because the doctors reacted very quickly. As soon as I had the stroke, I was in the hospital and the operation was within a half hour of my stroke. And uh, I think that's why I ended up in such good shape. But it's important to point out that in the best of circumstances, we can probably only reverse somewhere in the neighborhood of about a third of the major strokes that come into the emergency room. Therefore, the, the name of this game is trying to prevent strokes. The guidelines for helping to prevent stroke include checking your blood pressure regularly according to your doctor's instructions. Losing weight helps reduce blood pressure. If you are overweight, lose the extra pounds with exercise and dietary changes. Smoking can increase your risk of atherosclerosis and stroke. If you smoke, stop. Talk to your doctor if you need help quitting. To help prevent atherosclerosis, eat nutritious foods that are low in cholesterol and fats, especially saturated fat. Coming up, Dr. Hopkins' team is pioneering new minimally invasive technology for preventing and treating stroke from inside the tiny blood vessels in the brain. And later... I became dizzy and the room started spinning around. 